Welcome to the 531, where we debate a top 5 list on a particular subject, further discuss it down to a top 3, and then eventually settle on a top 1. Now after this beat, we'll get to today's subject. subject vote it down to a top three and then debate that top three down to a number one spot dave this week it's got to be my favorite all-time wrestling match the war games mm. tell me about uh, it regal <laughs> the last fan just did a really good retrospective on the war games on their podcast i thought yeah man i mean this is something we talk about a lot actually i mean we've like war games has been mentioned i think in Top five cage match lists we've done. We've done war games versus the Rumble. We've done all kinds of stuff about it. But in my research, I've yet to see that we had a top five war games. And for any fans out there, if we're wrong, feel free to shove it up our ass. <laughs> because clearly we don't do the best research. That's on us. <laughs> yeah, on our own show, by the way. Like, we've recorded it. We forgot about it. But we just don't now. This is actually a couple weeks after the newest NXT war game match happened. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed that one. It's not like the old ones necessarily, but they are. They've got to, they're keeping the tradition in their own way. Yes, yes. Now, the first list I got this week is Jesse from New Hampshire, and he's got Wrestle War 92, mm. which had Sting, Nikita, Dustin, Steamboat, and Barry Windham versus Dangerous Alliance of Arn, Eaton, Steve Austin, Larry Zabisco, and Rick Root. Yeah, that's my uh, favorite war games of all time. I absolutely love that. To me, it's the selling <clears throat> in this war games of guys like Ricky Steamboat, Dustin Rhodes, Ian Anderson. The crowd reaction is just rabid. I think it's the best of what this is. Now, second on his list, he's got Fall Brawl 93, which has Sting, Bulldog, Dustin, and the Shockmaster. Versus Sid, Vader, Harlem, and Harlem Heat. Yeah, you know, I don't know if that's a favorite of a lot of people's, but I actually kind of like it too. I think I was just a big fan of some of the wrestlers in there. Not so much Fred Oatman, no offense, Fred. To quote Dusty Rhodes, Fred Oatman's a bitch, baby. I'm embarrassed he's in my family. <laughs> that may not be a real quote, but I heard that somewhere. But, no, nah, I like uh, the Harlem Heat. I love Sid at the time, the Bulldog, and I thought Dustin was really good in that match too. Yeah, that team, Sid, Vader, and Harlem Heat, that's just... Four monsters mm. in there. And even though it's not a five on five match, that is a good, like, baby face versus heel dynamic, I yeah. thought. Now, Fall Brawl 95 is third on his list. This is Hogan's team in the camo, which is Hogan, Savage, Luger, and Sting versus Kamala, Zodiac, uh, Shark, and Meng. Jesse, how dare you? <laughs> I love you, kid. You put some good stuff on there. This was clearly a biased time of Hulkamania, I guess it is. Eyes, I hate that War Games. I absolutely can't stand it. Jesse, you've got a lot of good lists. I'm going to cut you some slack. But that one, I disagree. Vehemently. I mean, how good should it be, though, with Kamala? It shouldn't. In May. <laughs> Not that time period. <laughs> Those guys. <laughs> and another thing, dude, the fucking finish. Zodiac in the camel clutch. Yes, no, yes, no. What the hell? It ruined it. It ruined war games. Ah, I don't want to talk about it. Piss me off. <laughs> All right, let's move on to happier topics then. The return of NXT, the return of the war games in NXT in 2017 with Cole Fish and O'Reilly yeah. versus the authors of Pain and Roderick Strong versus Killian Dean, Alexander Wolf, and Eric Young. Yeah, good stuff. Not quite war games like they would say on the laps fan, you know, because we were doing it the three way at the time. But the action was good here, and it ended up setting up Roderick Strong turning on the Officer Pain, enjoying the era, which, in my opinion, this is the highlight of Roderick Strong's career right now. His run with Undisputed Era. Like, I don't think Strong's ever been better in his career, at least as a total package on the mic and as a performer in the ring. I'm loving the future war games we're going to see after this with that team. 
And I think the era has kind of really redefined war games in the modern era. Yeah, I think what makes this one so good is that it is this, the restart of yes. that modern era. It sets Undisputed Era as the War Games is their match. Yep. And that year, with it being the first year that it returned, I was just excited that we were going to be able to see the War Games return and the match that it would produce. I thought it was great. I'm going to throw you a list here, all right? I got oh, wow, my... we got one more. Oh, you got... We got his fifth list is NXT 2019 with Ciampa, Lee, Dijakovic, and Owens versus Cole, Riley, Fish, and Strong. I think we talked about this off air a little bit. What I remember mostly about that is Ciampa and Cole taking that hellacious bump off the top of the cage through several tables. And this was, of course, was the one where WWE made sure to get a shot of Britt Baker in the audience and then, you know, trying to say, oh, they didn't mean to do that. Now, that being said, even though I remember that, again, another hell of a war game. And this was the one, listen to the Laps Fans podcast, where they said NXT got it right finally. Out of all the modern war games, this was the one, you know, where they really enjoyed it. They put this one over, the 2019 men's war games. It's good to see Owens in there with Lee, Dijak, and Ciampa. Yeah. And obviously, to go up against Undisputed Era, you're going to need that good opposition team. Great great weekend for NXT, by the way. This was last year where they were included in that Survivor Series, and they ended up winning the tri-branded, you know, angle where everybody fought. And uh, Cole had a win over Daniel Bryan on a SmackDown leading up to this. He ended up getting a win at Survivor Series, too. I'm blanking out on who that was. But, you know, and then he had this big War Games performance, even though he didn't win. So... Cole and you know the Arab they really had a great weekend. So yeah, definitely. Now whose list do you have? I got Zach. He's got the '92 uh, War Games. He's got 2018 War Games. He's got 2017, '91, and '89. You know we talked a lot about '92 already. Uh, that was my favorite one. Uh, it was interesting on this list. I thought was '89 in particular. Joe, I don't know if you had the list in front of you, those guys, but I remember uh, this is the one Steve Doctor Def Williams. Was involved. I do have it. It was Bash 89, and it's the Road Warriors, the Midnight Express, and Dr. Death versus the Fabulous Freebirds and the Simone Swat team. Right. It's like a very interesting group of people for that time period, because this is the first time we got away from some form of Dusty, you know, whoever, it was, whoever Dusty had for a team versus the Horsemen. You know, like this was the first time we went in a different direction. Yeah, and Midnight Express on that face side is interesting to see. And he also had 91 on this list, too, which is a fun one, too. That's the one where Sid, who was a member of the Horsemen, powerbombed Brian Pillman. And Pillman actually hit the top of the cage and ended up injuring his shoulder. Wow, nobody leaves the War Games unscathed, it seems, especially shoulders. Yes. <laughs> Let me give you Mikey and Fred's list. Yes, Mikey and Fred from our uh, Facebook group, who, uh, well, he messaged us on the uh, Facebook page. Yeah, you want to get in on the 531, message us, drop it in the comments. We usually post it in enough sometimes, we surprise you with it. Yeah. But his list is 1, Bash 87, 2, Wrestle War 91, that's the Four Horsemen with Zabisco versus Sting, Pillman, and the Steiner Brothers. He's got Wrestle War 92, Sting Squadron versus the Dangerous Alliance. NXT 2017, the Undisputed Era versus AOP and Strong versus that Sanity combo. And he's got Fall Brawl 98, WCW versus NWF. I mean, again, what I'm noticing too is so far, I think 92 is going to make a lot of list. <laughs> 92, 91. Yeah. I'm going to say probably 87, even though it's still early to call. Yeah. I mean, I think you're right there. 87, the first one, is going to be a favorite of a lot of people's. What stuck out on that list? Anything in particular that you had? Fall Brawl 98. Uh, it's a little odd to see one so close to the year 2000. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, for me, my golden years of WCW were probably closer to, like, Jim Crockett Promotions times. I want to say late 80s. Yeah. Maybe early 90s. Honestly, the bigger that Nitro got, the more I kind of fell out with it. Mm. I still watched it, but it just got to be too much when the NWO overgrew. So, in a late 98, that that wouldn't be my pick, personally. Yeah, I like that 89 made it again, though. 89's getting some love on this uh, show. I'm going to go to a longtime fan of the show, number one fan, some would say, Randy Osga. He's got 
92 war games, 91 war games. He's got the 2020 men. He's got the first one uh, in 1987. And then he's got 88, which was Dusty, Steve Williams, Nikita Koloff, and Lex Luger, and Paul Ellering versus the Four Horsemen. Solid list as always. Yeah, Randy knows how to bring it. I'm just checking something here, Joe, because sometimes I mess up on Randy's list. And I just want to, nope, 91 was his <laughs> second one. I had only wrote down nine for whatever reason. <laughs> so. You didn't want him to take you out to the field on that one. No, 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 no. I messed up one a couple weeks ago. I gave him an apology last Now, the next list I got is from fan of the show, Mike Flynn, friend of the show even. And he's got the 87 War Games, so the original one, 91, 92, 2018, and the 2019 Men's. Actually, he had the 2019 women's. Oh, yep. No, it says women's. Yeah, <laughs> 2019 with the women. That is the one last year where Dakota Kai made her heel turn. And, yep, uh, and yeah, started a pretty big year for her. Uh, COVID not ruined it, I would say. Yeah, no, I would say too. I thought it was one of the better, well-done heel turns too. She was a really great baby face. And she had a really, really brutal beatdown on Tegan Knox, who, poor girl, continues to get actual real life knee injuries and uh, hope the best for her. That definitely was a memorable thing about that women's war games. Yeah, 100%. Now, whose list do you have next? I got Scott. Scott from Voluntown. He's got 91 in his top spot because damn right, that's the best one of all time. Well, actually, 92 is the best one of all time, but 91's close. 92 is in here at number two. 87, the original. 89, and then he has the 2019 men. The opposite of Mike Flynn. A uh, solid list. The next list I got is mine. This is the last one. Mm. I've got, obviously, the original Bash 87. I've got the Bash 89 also with that Freebirds versus and uh, Simone SWAT team versus Road Warriors Express and Dr. Death. I've got the MLW 2003 War Games, which is Terry Funk, The Sandman, Dr. Death, Sabu, and Bill Alfonso versus Steve Carino, Simon Diamond, C.W. Anderson, P.J. Walker, and Barry Windham. Mm -hmm. This is the one, if you listen to the last fan, Court Bauer talked about with Terry Funk and the Branding Iron. And you can see it on, I believe, almost any, w, almost any old MLW intro. That's quite a list of people for that time period. <laughs> yeah, especially since in 2003, you got Dr. Death and Barry Windham back in a War Games cage. Now, the next one I have after that is the return of the War Games to MLW in 2018 with Barrington Hughes, John Hedigan, Cotto Brazil, Shane Swerve Strickland, and Tommy Dreamer versus Abyss, Jimmy Havoc, Sammy Callahan, Leon Scott and Sawyer Fulton. And then the last one on my list is the 2019 Men's War Games. We've covered with Lee, Ciampa, Dijak, Kovic, and Owens versus the Undisputed Era. Well, it's a good list, my man. But I'm going to go a little different route. I'm going to include MLW as well. But I'm going to include their 2019 War Games with the Von Ericks, Ross and Marshall, former guest of the show, Loki, and Tom Law with Kevin in their corner against Contra Unit, Jacob Fatu, Joseph Samuel, and Simon Gotch. Also, uh, Kiro Kwan, I believe, was the other guy in that match. To me, it's just, man, you got the Von Erichs back out here in Dallas, because that took place in Dallas for the cage, and you got Kevin outside. And I just really love, I love the dynamic of when Ross and Marshall get in there, particularly with Joseph Samuel and Jacob Fatu. There's some kind of like, you know, Pier 6 brawl, old school, like, element where it looks like a real fight when those guys are in there against each other. So Yeah, that feud is really driving, I would say, MLW even through the restart right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of all those guys. To me, J uh, Joseph Samuel is kind of the uh, underrated one of the group because the Ron Eriks, obviously Ross and Marshall, super talented. I think they're going to be great stars. And Jacob Fatu is obviously... A crazy athlete for his size. But 
Joseph Samuel is like this old school brawler where he throws the fireballs and he's going to get color in the match. And I think he really adds something to that stuff. I also got the 92 War Games. Obviously, I said that's my favorite. Sting Squadron, Dangerous Alliance. 91 makes my list. And then I had uh, the 2021 of this year with the men because uh, recency bias. I really enjoyed it and decided to put it in there. And I put in the 2019 Women's War Games as well. Wow, now, to be honest, I originally had the 2020 War Games, but then when I saw the 2019 one, I, just seeing Kevin Owens in there, I remember how much that excited me, and I'm like, maybe I'll give that the edge over 2020, just since 2020 just happened. Yeah, I probably recently biased, I just wanted to include it, because I saw no one else had it, and I'm really impressed with, for how limited he's been in the ring, how Pat McAfee's been performing and everything. If anything, I thought the War Games went a little long, but I still thought it was a solid, solid effort by everybody, and uh, made my list. Yeah, and I think the highlight was actually McAfee's performance, given that he is not a full-time wrestler, but... He is performing the best in that spot in quite a while, would you say? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's delivering, especially on the mic. But he's showing it in his limited in-ring stuff, too. He's doing great. And he's really adding a lot to people like Pete Dunne, Oni Lorking, and Danny Burch. Like, you know, all quiet, like, assassins now have this mouthpiece. Yeah, 100%. Now, do you have any more list? No, that's it. You know, we can... Uh, Try to figure out this thing. I think 92's got to be in there. And um, Yeah, I was going to say, I saw you were keeping track over there. So kind of who do you have as the front runners I, that got the most votes? I got 92 and 91. Then it gets a little dicey. I'm going to say 87 is probably in here, I think. I think most people had the original. 87's in there a lot. Or 89. Let's throw it up between 87 and 89 because that did make a couple lists. I, to me, 89's a little more exciting just because of the Road Warriors, the Midnight Express. You've got the dynamic where it's not Dusty versus the Horsemen anymore. So it's kind of that first step that the War Games took from being that kind of that Dusty Horseman match to this can exist outside of that story structure. Yeah, I got no problem with moving 89 over 87. I know a few traditionalists and hardcore fans are probably going to fucking let us have it for not including the number one in the final three. But we do things a little differently here sometimes. Like making Kane the number one mass wrestler in the world of all time. I can't tell you what we're going to do, folks. We go where the thing takes Guys, us. listen. Dave doesn't like Starcade 83. He's allowed to make mistakes. Happy. There's some things we're going to leave off. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that being said, I got this down, well... I guess you could argue, I think 92 is my winner, obviously. I already said that, but, you know, I mean, you, you could make an argument 89 is better than 91, because 91 is ca kind of at a crazy finish where Pillman kind of gets hurt. So, you know, but there's definitely, there's a hot crowd for both of them. What do you think it is about the Sting Squadron versus Dangerous Alliance match that makes it the best war games? Uh, like I was saying earlier, I think it's just, it's two things. It's the rabid crowd, and it's the selling. Everybody is selling their ass off in this match if you go watch it. There's blood, too. Everybody's bleeding. Everybody's taking crazy bumps. But they're all, you know, building. And the, the pace. I think if you go back and watch this, with the exception of maybe, you know, modern wrestling, for that time period, this is a pace like any other war games. But it all looks violent. Steamboat's a big part of that. I think Steamboat really kind of really helps this thing along, in my opinion. Plus that 92 WCW crowd. You don't get crowds like that anymore from that golden period of WCW. No, it's funny because obviously it wasn't their most successful time period business-wise, but the crowds they did get were loyalists and super rabid. They were there to see WCW. Now, do you think that's more of a trademark of Southern-style wrestling versus what... <clears throat> is produced more no more north? I would say uh, it's definitely uh, part of it. At the end of the day, it's a different crowd. Right, I don't know if that crowd still exists as much. I think it does in certain parts. Talking to our boy from WrestleTopia there, JD, he mentioned that, you know, they have had some promotions where it's still, you know, they run it and still a similar crowd. I'd like to see that at some point, maybe when COVID eventually uh, <laughs> frees up and we could travel a little more safely. But yeah, man, I don't know. I'm a big fan of that old school style crowd. Even Henry Godwin, who we had recently on the show, I've referenced how when him and Dennis Knight were tech slashing and sharing our 
Shanghai Pierce and WCW, and they were working those uh, Saturday night tapings at Atlanta Center Stage. For whatever reason, the crowd took a liking to one of them, and everything they would do would be like, hoo, ah, hoo, ah, and they would just go nuts, and it made the match interesting. It made it more exciting to me. Now, a little tangent here. Are you excited for the upcoming AEW Blood and Guts whenever it does happen? Yeah, I'll throw you a little side. On the war game. I'll throw you a little sidebar here. I'm not only excited for that, I think this is possibly what we're going to see Sting. I think, because even though it's a war games, because it's a multi-person and if Sting's the last guy in it, I think we can protect Sting this way where he doesn't take a lot of bumps. He can be the guy who's a house of fire. I think we're looking at Cody. I think we're looking at Darby. I think we're looking at Sting. We'll say those three at least are for sure. We're going to need two other guys, obviously. Maybe, well, Dustin could be someone in there, so that'd be four. And, you know, depending, we're going to do five. But obviously on the other side... We got Cage. We got Ricky Starks. We got... Uh, Who are they going to go up against? Are they going up against Inner Circle or are they going up Team against... Taz. Uh, Team Taz. Team Taz, That's said? what I think, yeah. You know. Okay. And if you're going to... I mean, you got Taz's son, Hook, hanging around here now. You know, Hobbs. So, I don't know. There's a lot of people there. If you're going to do five on five, maybe you even get Taz involved somehow. I don't know. I mean, it's a little crazy wow. to think both Taz and Sting in a war games. But, you know, if all can be protected, you know, and it's a good... It's a good hook, no pun intended to his kid, and you get people in here, and, you know, there's enough wrestlers in there who could hopefully carry it and still make it very exciting. Yeah, 100% now. I just, that just, War Games made me think of that, but, I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that 92 is the winner here. Yeah. Anybody, if you guys disagree with it, let us know in the comments, get to us in email. We got a live show Wednesday night where you can curse us out to our face. Yeah, you got the balls. <laughs> Little bitches. <laughs> 6 p.m. Wednesday, every Wednesday, unless we're late. Yeah. Or, or unless AJ's handing out cheesecakes to the homeless, whichever yeah. happens first. Or have, me and Joe will be there, most likely. <laughs> Except December 30th. I actually work that night. We gotta pay them bills. We're, we'll figure that out. I just sprang that on Dave on the air. We gotta pay them bills, brother. <laughs> guys, have a good week, and we will talk to you next week. Later. Guys, thank you for listening to the 531 here on YouTube this week. If you like what you hear, you can always find us on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and on the Apple Podcast where you can subscribe and also give us a five-star rating. We appreciate you listening. We want your feedback, 531, and if you agree with us, if you disagree with us, we also want you to let us know and let us know what your 531 would be. Come up with a top five and let us know and we'll tell you why you're wrong. And in order for us to do that, please contact us on Twitter, we're at Fans Working, Facebook page, Working Fans Wrestling Pod, email WorkingFansWrestlingPod at gmail.com. It's very important that you actually contact us on these platforms because we want this to be your interactive place to talk wrestling.